Thanks for listening to Live Forever Young Radio. Did you know that heavy metals can be found in air, water, foods, and even some medicines? On today's show, Bob and Raleigh talk about heavy metal toxicity and the effects it can have on your health. They identify the most common metals associated with heavy metal poisoning and how to avoid being exposed. Bob and Raleigh also cover what you can do to help detoxify your body of heavy metals if you have been or are at high risk of being exposed. So sit back, relax, and get ready to live forever young. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Live Forever Young Radio. I'm Bob. I'm here with Raleigh today. How's it going, Bubba? Raleigh, I see you have one of your Champa Bay hats on. It's brand new. I got it for Christmas. And it's in honor of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers winning this past Sunday. And you know what they did, right? They clinched the division. Oh, that's right. We clinched the division. First time since 2007. That's awesome. (laughs) That's awesome. I'm looking forward to having them win their second Super Bowl in a row. Right. Which is becoming something that's routine around here. The uh, Lightning are going for their third um, Stanley Cup in a row. And the Tampa Bay Rays baseball team is going for their third Eastern Division title. That's right. In a row. So it's only natural that the Bucks go back to back. And as they say around here in Tampa... The spectacular is routine. Yes, it is. We've become so accustomed. We've won so many champions. And it's going to be a great thing. Um, The one thing that I have to say is that when you talk about becoming healthy and doing the best that you can, some of the things you can't account for, right? You can get exposed to lots of things, right? And what we're talking about today is heavy metal exposure Mm -hmm. or heavy metal toxicity. And a lot of people don't realize, but that is very common. In nowadays, especially with all the things yeah. that we have yeah. heavy metals in, you know? Yeah. There's heavy metals in the soil. There's heavy metals in the air. Mm-hmm. There's also heavy metals in the water, which we had heard about, you know, going back to 2015 mm-hmm. time frame when they had that big scandal in Flint, Michigan. Yes, I'm from Michigan. And when I heard about that, I was right. extremely disappointed Uh, so what had happened was in order to try to save some money Mm -hmm. the um the government officials decided to change the water supply from lake huron one of the great lakes Mm -hmm. to the flint river that just doesn't sound like a good switch to me it created (laughs) a big problem yeah yeah apparently what they were saying is the flint river was they kind of knew it to be a little bit more corrosive of a water supply but they, they still it anyway, switched it over. And it dropped the fertility rates in the area by 12%. Mm-hmm. And it increased the infant death rate by 58%. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And a lot of infants also that were born, that lived, ended up with birth defects. Yes, they did. And actually, a big reason why this happened is because they actually didn't treat the water. Yeah, They hooked the water supply up, but they never treated the water coming in from the river. Right. So they figured right. this out, and a couple yep. things happened to the officials. They got a couple counts uh, of uh, misdemeanors and felonies, but 30, 34 felonies yep. on a couple of yep. the officials there in uh, Michigan, Flint. Yep. Most and of the charges were dropped, but as happens a lot of times in cases like this, you have a civil suit. This yep. one resulted in $641 million in damages. Wow. See, that, that sounds yep. like a lot, but still, I mean, you think about health is priceless. And what they did is they took that away. So, hey, at least they're working on fixing it. I know they switched it back. They said they switched it back. They switched it back to Lake Huron. Good. Right. So um, other things you have to watch out for that are environmental like that, one that we've heard about for a long time is lead poisoning. Correct. So in 1978, they stopped using lead in paint Mm. that they were painting houses with. But if you live in a house that was built prior to 1978, you still could have trouble with lead paint, Mm -hmm. right? And it's not just if someone was to eat a paint chip, but that lead paint can also have a problem with the lead being in the air Mm. and inhaled. Yeah, you used to hear a long time, hey, would you eat too many paint chips as a kid? 
But no. you don't even have to eat them. You just be exposed right. to the air and the and the environment, especially in an enclosed house when it's yep. off gassing these things after years of right. being on the wall. It's not good. Yeah. Another another one that people hear about is mercury poisoning. Mm -hmm. and oh mercury, yeah, yeah. For you know, going back many years ago, they um, used to have mercury was a very common industrial chemical, mm -hmm. and people would get really sick and die from working around mercury. Mm. And you also have mercury that's in environmental pesticides, mm -hmm. um, older fluorescent lights. Yeah, when you break them long tubes, you see right. that gas coming out, you don't, don't hang around that gas. <laughs> yeah, that you can inhale mercury Oof. and mercury poisoning can be very devastating. Yeah, when my dad was a kid, mercury, didn't they used to use that in the thermometers, right? Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. he, my dad remember he would tell me when a thermometer would break because of the way it, it like globs back together they would sit there and play with the mercury right with their fingers right don't do that yeah exactly <laughs> exactly arsenic another one that's in um in the food and water people can get arsenic poisoning um another one don't they put that in cigarettes too i think they put that um, in cigarettes i've heard Yes, the answer is yes. According to a report from the California Air Resources Board and the Department of Health Services, smokers breathe in approximately 0.8 to 2.4 micrograms of inorganic arsenic per pack of 20 cigarettes. About 40% of it is deposited in their respiratory tract. Uh, another one that's in, in the soil and is also in batteries is cadmium. Mm. And that can be particularly devastating. Mm. You also um, have too much chromium in the soil and chemicals, the metal industries, and like that. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of a lot of the poisoning comes from industry, mm. right? So processes of making things in industry um, utilize and have, um, you know. The, the situation where the heavy metals can get into the water supply, right. into the soil. Because of the waste from their production, yep. it ends up having to be put somewhere. And yep. they used to say dilution is the solution to pollution, but we know that's not true anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you also have cookware that mm -hmm. can uh, can cause cause problems. There's also, you know, even something like aluminum can be... Um, can accumulate, especially in your brain. Mm -hmm. There's research that shows an association between Alzheimer's disease and aluminum mm. accumulation. Weird, okay. Yep. And other things that, you know, you see as symptoms which are things like headaches and also um, people that are always drowsy, um, even more serious things like kidney malfunction and problems with your nervous system even disorders in your brain mm -hmm. in addition to alzheimer's some like with mercury poisoning also people would would sometimes get seizures mm. they would get gastrointestinal distress right right i was actually reading a little bit before we did the show and back in the day i wear a lot of hats uh <laughs> the hat industry the felt hat industry the hat makers would go crazy they would they would suffer yeah. from what they call mad hatter syndrome and what they would do is the lining around the edge, they would seal, they would use mercury in that process. Yep. And the touching and the, the constant inhaling of those vapors as they heat it yep. would, would cause them to go kind of crazy. What it causes like overexcitability, like if you've ever seen, I'm sure you've seen Alice in Wonderland. Um, yep. They act all crazy and off the wall. And that's actually what physically happened to people back in the day when they were, they were hatters. They would turn mad. Yep. So it's not just a... A character in a in a fairy tale it's actually based on reality yeah. <laughs> which is crazy yeah and so you can see literally how this can really be a serious issue yeah no and you is. can um you need to know that if someone gets an acute heavy metal poisoning you know you've been exposed you want to get to the emergency room right away you may have to um in some cases have your stomach pumped out yeah. if it's from ingestion or support for your lungs if you've inhaled, inhaled it. Yep. And then um, if you have chronic long-term exposure, mm -hmm. and you can get tested for this, so you can have uh, blood tests, a urinalysis, 
You can have um, a hair analysis, mm -hmm. which will show, and you can get a list of many heavy metals, 20 or 30 of them, mm -hmm. that you can get tested for. Mm -hmm. And if you do have such a thing, there's a uh, treatment. It's called chelation therapy. So chelation, ke um, chelation is, means claw. Mm. So the and so they call it chelation because if you have a heavy metal um, that where this chelating agent comes, it will wrap itself around it like mm. a claw, and it kind of disguises it as something else that needs to be moved out of your body. Okay. And then it comes out through your urine. Right. Okay. So you just kind of right. excrete it through your normal yep. process. And chelation is done at a chelation center where they're trained to do it. Uh -huh. um, before you go, you have to consume enough protein. Okay. And you uh, and water, and then you go. It's um, and they inject these chelating agents okay. right into your bloodstream. Really. Yeah. And so that and you know you can go for one treatment to knock it down a little bit sometimes people will go for 20 or 30 treatments mm. before they can get the majority of those heavy metals out of their body we have a there's a chelation center right across the street from us mm -hmm. in one of the medical offices yeah right just yeah. well you can't see it just over there <laughs> yeah the other thing is is um there's a product which we have that's called zeolite. Mm -hmm. And zeolite is um, a honeycomb type of compound that attracts the heavy metals to it. Mm. And the heavy metals will come in and get trapped inside these honeycomb type of structures. And then the whole, the whole honeycomb will get passed out of your body in your urine. It's, so it's similar to like yeah. the chelation thing. But it's actually... It's a, so, yeah, and zeolite is taken in liquid form usually, mm -hmm. and you would start by taking one drop on your tongue and just swallow it, and then you would do that for a few days. You would just do one drop, mm -hmm. and then after a few days, you could increase to two drops and keep on going, and some people notice that a very dark color to their urine as the heavy metals start to come out. Okay, okay. Other, other things... That could possibly happen. I mean, if you're getting rid of stuff through sweat and things like that, you might actually have some come out of your, depending on your what you got, mm -hmm. you might have some of it kind of exposed to your skin coming out that way. Um, mm -hmm. Some of the things that we um, kind of talk about here are things that most people aren't, aren't aware of. And one of the things I don't think we mentioned is that heavy metals are actually essential to the body mm -hmm. and to your health, but in really small amounts. So when you sure. do come into contact with a large amount of heavy metals and it can throw that balance off, yep. that's where a lot of the things like we were talking about the GI issues and the kidney malfunction, a lot of it actually, depending on what you're exposed to, can affect it differently, right? Like we were talking, mercury yep. affects the mind. Um, other things like they, they could affect your intestinal system. They could affect your nervous system as well. Yep. So you, you, know, you have an issue depending on what kind of metal right. you get exposed to. And so that's why it's really important if you work around heavy metals for your job, it's really important to try to prevent the yeah. the exposure right so wear masks cover up wear gloves and, and and protective clothing so that way you can at least mitigate it a little bit yeah. um but i've talked to lots of people actually a couple people i know who are in the automotive industry and they're mechanics and they paint a lot of stuff with still lead based when you paint a car you're still using um paints with a lot of lead and things mm -hmm. like that in it and so they wear huge respirators and if you see what they paint in it's always well ventilated and you can't right. be exposed to these things because that accumulation it's going to cause a problem yeah your your body is very gelatinous and <laughs> right. absorbs things very easily <laughs> right through your skin through your lungs, through what you are drinking and eating. Right. And if they tend to accumulate, they're going to interfere with your cellular function. And that's one of the reasons why le lethargy is such a common symptom. Right. It's interfering with the production of adenosine triphosphate in your Krebs cycle. Right. And so people will have very low energy as a result. And not only that, but the energy is being produced normally mm -hmm. f 
fuels all your other metabolic pathways. Right. And that's why when you have poisoning, so many different parts of your body can be affected. Yeah. And uh, another uh, source of some of these heavy metals, believe it or not, can be medicines. You know, yeah. they do have some yeah. things that like there's this thing called, uh, th I believe it, thimerosal. I think it's called thimerosal. And it's something that they use in multi-dose vaccines. So mm -hmm. it's it's something you got to be careful because if you, um, again, expose yourself or you're not aware of what it is that you're exposed to in your environment, yeah. you start getting symptoms of, like we were talking about, drowsiness, confusion. Some people even get seizures, yeah. you know. So yeah. be on the lookout for these. They're, they're things you really wouldn't realize, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And... Um, you know, if people want to get some zeolite, Yo, yeah. um, what I would recommend first is get your test for heavy metal toxicity and That's very see important. what your level is. And then if you'd like to use some zeolite, we can help you with that. Yeah, yeah, we have some really good stuff available. Actually, ours is a little different in the sense that you can actually take it longer than normal zeolite. Yep. It won't uh, deplete your potassium, I believe. Right. Exactly. And so that's big. Some people, when they use zeolite um, that's not like ours, um, they're concerned about the p depletion of potassium, which is very, you don't want to do that. Right. But ours is formulated in a way that it doesn't affect that. And yep. so you could take it for longer amounts of time, help remove the metals and get the things flushed out of you so you're not toxic. toxic. Yep. <laughs> and people can give us a call at the office if you want to talk about it. Yeah, and go to boomerboost.com. Also, too, you know, not only is heavy metal toxicity an issue, but we talk about a lot of different things on our on our podcast. And one of the things we talk about all the time is inflammation, right? So this exposure, obviously, to these toxic things are causing inflammation. So another good thing to do is work on ways to keep inflammation down in general, especially if you're experiencing heavy metal toxicity. Those are some things you want to do as well. Um, you know, take good antioxidants, make sure you're drinking lots of water to flush your system out, try to find a chelating a agent that can help you, and hopefully feel better. There you go. <laughs> well, Raleigh, thank you very much for being here today. Of course, and thank Bob. Thank you, everybody, for watching and listening to Live Forever Young Radio. We'll see you on the next show. Thanks for listening to Live Forever Young Radio. Check us out at liveforeveryoungradio.com. <laughs>